Hello! Welcome back to the game room. I missed you. And we have an awesome episode today. So, uh, first and foremost, uh, it's been a crazy two or three weeks. <laughs> it might even be longer at this point. So, the original episode 150 was supposed to be about um, how Game Rave came to be and a little bit into my personal life. That's been pushed back to indefinitely whenever because this was so much cooler. So, to start things off, we're going to talk about Interactive Sampler CD Volume 1. Now, if you've never, ever seen this before, um, there's actually about 11 volumes. These demos are packaged in with the PlayStation system, so a little bit little of a freebie for buying the system. You can check some stuff out. What is important about this demo and the Variant Hunter part of the episode is that the demo disc that was packed in with the system is considered the mature rated copy of the demo, SUS 94955, because you could play uh, Loaded and Mortal Kombat 3 on it. While this demo was sitting in the system box, Sony didn't want anyone left out, so they made a retail version of it, which is considered the teen version, because in this version, MK3 and Loaded are locked out. You can only play the E to teen rated games. And that's where the episode would have ended if it weren't for a crazy night three or four weeks ago. Let me explain. So, obviously, the very hunting angle, it's all over my life. And the one night I was like, you know what? I'm just going to take a night off from everything. I'm going to go in the game room, play some games. And I decided that I'd play Monster Rancher because I wanted to see what kind of monsters I could create with the CDs I had at hand. If you've never played Monster Rancher before, you literally open the system and you swap discs for a second, the game will read that swapped in disc. And then once you put Monster Rancher back, it will generate a monster or creature from reading something on that disc. You can use PlayStation games, other game system CDs, blank CDRs, music CDs. As long as it was a CD that the system could read, you could generate a monster from it. Since I had both copies just sitting on the desk chilling because I'm actually alphabetizing and reorganizing um, all my demos, I was like, ah, oh, cool, let's see, what the, let's see what the different creatures they make because the, you know, missing demos. So I threw in the mature one, got my monster, got his stats, threw in the teen one, and then got the same monster and the same stats. And I went, wait... <laughs> There's a huge difference by not having two playable demos on a disc. There had, to have, there, there had to have been a different monster generated. So I got confused, and I was like, you know what? Let me throw the discs into my laptop and see what's up. So I threw the maturated game into my laptop and went, oh, okay, that's, you know, that's cool, everything's there. Then I threw in the teen-rated demo and got a shock. All the files, including folders for MK3 and Loaded, were still on the disc, sitting next to a folder for Doom. And yeah, that's the same reaction I had. <laughs> I got really confused. Opening the folders, realized there was an executable on Doom. But here's where it gets stranger. Doom, Williams, who pro, uh, published the Longbox version, and id Software are not mentioned anywhere. Not on the packaging, not in the packaging copyright, not in the copyright screens, not even in all the different scrolling text and hidden things which you can find on the game's, uh, the demos page on GameRave.com. So we had an unlisted, secret, possible demo of Doom sitting here chilling on both demos of the game. I had to do something. <laughs> now, the next day, as I was talking about this, um, I just happened to be scrolling through my YouTube channels, and uh, Mr. Mario, who runs a really cool channel on here, um, just happened to be talking about how he was patching some games to play. So I reached out to him, and I reached out to a, another friend, and I was like, look, here's the situation. So Mr. Mario sent out the call and the bat signal for his friends to help out where they could, um, and my other uh, associate contacted them. And basically, with me as the middleman, we had a person over here and a group over here all trying to figure out how to get this Doom demo playable. We got, within the first, like, day and a half, we actually got it playable through what is essentially a hacked ISO. The problem was, is in hacking the Doom to be playable, 
the rest of the demo was sacrificed. Like if you threw it in, all you could play is Doom. Trying to figure out if we could get it to be 100% accurate, while everyone involved was doing their parts, I was actually busy researching why it wouldn't have been on the disc. And <laughs> it kind of all happened like in the same like span of like two or three days. Um, just as we were making progress uh, in reverse engineering the demo, I discovered that the lead programmer for the PlayStation version of Doom doesn't really have a social media presence, so I couldn't ask him any questions. However, John Carmack has a social presence. And besides being the co-founder of id and the creator of Doom, he worked with the PlayStation staff in making that port. So I reached out to him, and after a passionate explanation of everything that was going on, I asked him, would he know why the demo would not have been included for any reason? And John Carmack's response will shock you. He replied, no idea at all. Sorry. <laughs> and that's word for word, his reply. So having a good chuckle, um, as I went to figure out the rest, the, see if I could find an answer, what happened behind the scenes was incredible. So basically, every person involved each had something they discovered that may or may not help the situation. But once we had the game shark code locations, the reverse engineering, the approach on how to do it, and then how to properly patch it, everything came together. And instead of the garbled mess, we now have this. Not only is the Doom demo now fully playable, we essentially turned the teen demo into the mature version of the demo, plus one, making Doom. It's absolutely incredible. Like, I, I really wished I had documented this whole process that was going on because literally every day after work, I would go to open up my social feeds and just be pounded in the face with, with everyone saying, hey, we found something, we got something, blah, blah, blah. And in crossing all the streams, we got this. Now, what makes the situation even weirder is that this playable demo of Doom isn't lost universally. It's only lost in America. This particular version of the demo was available to European players on two demo discs. And then a sort of updated version was released as a standalone demo. The standalone demo uh, adds in a couple extra screens and I believe um, the credits page to it. So why Sony of Europe approved it and Sony of America didn't remains to be seen. In While everyone was doing their hacking part, I was actually trying to research that angle, like basically answer the question, why? Why was it left out? And after what can only be described as a sickening... <laughs> amount of Google Foo, I came to two conclusions. One is pretty obvious. The second, not so much. Take it with a grain of salt. The possible reasons of why the Doom demo was not included or advertised or activated could be of two possibilities. The first was that for some reason, Sony of America discovered something didn't work on it, work on it or it wasn't stable enough for their you know, purposes, etc., the second one, and this is a bit of a stretch, two years prior of this demo's release, Doom, Mortal Kombat, and Night Trap were involved in this crazy, crazy lawsuit that involved the U.S. government about the violence in video games. It's possible that because Williams was the publisher of both Mortal Kombat and Doom, it was left up to Midway and id to decide the fate of these games. Midway, being Midway, it was probably just like, yeah, whatever, just throw it on there, it's good. But id probably kind of balked because at the time, systems didn't have ESRB rings on them. You could just buy the system, good to go, and then inside, have a demo with any rated game. So a parent who was buying a PlayStation for, say, 
a 10 year old might not have realized that within that box for the 10 year old were two mature rated games where you can blow people's heads off and rip them off. But like I said, that's all, that's all hearsay. Um, at least with the retail copy of doom, it wouldn't have to worry because it was behind the mature rated uh, thing and people would get their IDs checked. So yeah, playing monster rancher on an idle Tuesday is what led me to discover an unreleased demo of doom. Welcome to my life. Um, but now that we're here, uh, we will have the patch available on ROM hacking. Um, all you need to do is download the patch and then have a bin Q file of the teen version of the demo, which, um, if you have it in your collection, I just want to make your own personal, uh, bin Q. It is the one that has Warhawk in the first slot for the name. That's what you need. That is the, uh, 94956, uh, SCS number. Um, basically just patch it and it should play on a modified PlayStation just fine. Um, emulators were being tested out. I believe Mario said it worked on PSXE and one of the other ones. But yeah, guys, 25 year old lost demo of Doom. It's only February. <laughs> God knows where we're going from here. Oh my God. I love 2021 so far. Thank you guys. Have a great one. I will see you next episode. Enjoy the demo. Take care.